Possibly the most important unexplained phenomenon at ground zero are the extremely high temperatures registered under the rubble for many weeks after the collapses. On September 16, NASA shot these thermographic images of ground zero, indicating unusually high temperatures at the base of the three collapsed buildings. Despite the heavy rains of September 14th, the hotspots registered peak temperatures of more than 1300 degrees under the rubble. Ten days later, the fires kept burning. What's to explain, Governor, the smoke that still comes out There's of the fire? There's still fire down below. There is such an incredibly deep pile of rubble, and the, the tower goes down five, six stories underground. But we had uh, ABC uh, crews come back just in the last few minutes and telling us there are still flames coming out of the base of the trade towers. For the rescue workers, this became an additional burden on their already gruesome task. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. On October 8th, the hot spots under the three collapsed buildings remained clearly visible. Six weeks later, as the excavations progressed, the situation seemed only to get worse. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish-orange color. The consequences of such extreme temperatures were quite visible on the steel that was being extracted from the rubble. Where the grapplers were, were pulling stuff out, uh, big sections of iron that were literally on fire on the other end. They would hit the air and burst into flames, which was uh, pretty spooky to see. You would create an air pocket by moving steel, fueling the fight underground. But you know, these underground fires were just uh, like the fires of hell. If you could make a video of what you perceive hell to look like from fire shooting up at times, that's what would happen. You would be in the middle of what would look like steel, and then fire just would pop up. The firemen were coming out with an iron worker with their boots literally melted, and then the hose would come over and they would try to put that part out. I got there. Charlie Vichers was a supervisor of removal operations at Ground Zero. From PBS's America Rebuilds page, we read, Vitcher's crew picked up 40 to 60 foot long pieces of steel impaled in the pile, where the bottom 20 feet would be glowing red hot. Vitcher said, trucks loaded with steel would pass by and you could feel the back of your neck burning standing 20 feet away. In an article called A Dangerous Worksite, the US Department of Labor wrote, underground fires burned at temperatures of 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. This was confirmed by Mayor Giuliani. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. The Journal of the American Society of Safety Engineers wrote, thermal measurements taken by helicopter each day showed underground temperatures ranging from 400 to more than 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Eight weeks later, and the fires still had not subsided. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fires that are still burning. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. So, I mean, these things are burning. At one point, I think they were about 2,800 degrees. 11 weeks later, and the fires kept burning. As recently as the end of November, it was still 1,100 degrees down underneath the rubble. As November turned into December, ice was noticed in the mornings above the ground, but the debris underneath was still smoldering. The, the weird thing was it was very cold. When we were up there, I believe it was, it was in the middle of the winter but the ground wasn't frozen. The ground kind of like bubbled underneath your feet, which was kind of strange to me. It took until December 19, more than three months after the collapses, for the last underground fire to be extinguished. The debunkers have suggested different possibilities for this unexplained phenomenon. For example, it could be the fact that at the bottom, there are guns in the ground. At the bottom, there is a parking with an automobile. I piani interrati ci sono i generatori del Torigemel. Quindi ci sono molti materiali combustibili. Neither of these, however, seems to be a valid answer. In regards to the gasoline, the American Society of Safety Engineers wrote, three underground floors had been used as a parking garage with a total capacity of 2,000 cars. The cars were eventually located and removed. Some had exploded and were completely burned out, while others were in pristine, drivable condition. 
The gasoline in a car either explodes or it remains inside the tank. It does not leak out and go looking for fires to be fueled. In regards to the generator tank, the Society of Safety Engineers wrote, 72,000 gallons of diesel fuel were stored in a tank on basement level seven. The tank was eventually located and inspected. Although slightly damaged, no leaks were found. The fuel was removed. Another proof of extremely high temperatures reached during the collapses are the twisted and mangled steel beams found at ground zero. Architects, engineers, people who work with steel, welders have just never seen the level of destruction and the level of deformation of this material in our lives. You saw it steel, some of the thickest steel I've ever seen bent like a pretzel. This eight ton steel I-beam is six inches thick it was selected to be preserved for future generations for the near-perfect horseshoe-like bend formed during the collapse. I found it hard to believe that it actually bent because of the size of it and how there's no cracks in the iron. It bent without almost a single crack in it. It takes thousands of degrees to bend steel like this. In fact, the temperature of 2,800 degrees mentioned before is not casual at all, as that's exactly the temperature at which steel melts and molten steel was repeatedly found under the rubble at ground zero. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, yeah, like molten bit. steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like lava. Like, like, it was like lava. lava. A volcano. The fires got very intense down there and actually melted beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. Just like they did for the explosions, the debunkers simply doubt the testimonies on molten steel as a whole. NIST has also denied any knowledge of molten steel at ground zero. I'm curious about uh, the, uh, the pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the tower. Uh, uh, I know of absolutely nobody, no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. Uh, I was on the site, I was on the steel yards, so I can't, I don't know that that's so. It is true, Mr. Gross did visit the steel yards where the remnants of the towers had been collected. But he must have been in a big hurry as he didn't even notice the high degree of deformation of massive steel beams sitting only a few feet away. In any case, there are several highly credible witnesses who have reported the presence of molten steel at Ground Zero. Rich Garlock, a structural engineer working at Ground Zero said, going below, it was smoky and really hot. Here, World Trade Center 6 is over my head. The debris past the columns was red hot, molten, running. A supervisor from the National Environmental Health Association, Ron Berger, stated, feeling the heat, seeing the molten steel, the layers upon layers of ash, like lava, it reminded me of Mount St. Helens. William Langevisha is the author of American Ground, a book containing detailed descriptions of the conditions at ground zero. One passage mentions streams of molten metal that leaked from the hot cores and flowed down broken walls inside the foundation hole. Greg Fushek, who provided the rescue workers with global positioning equipment, stated, sometimes when a worker would pull a steel beam from the wreckage, the end of the beam would be dripping molten steel. Peter Tully of Tully Construction said that he saw pools of literally molten steel at the World Trade Center. Mark Loiseau, president of Control Demolitions, Inc., was told by contractors at Ground Zero about hot spots of molten steel in the basements at the bottoms of the elevator shafts of the main towers. Dr. Abalasan Astane, a professor of civil engineering at Berkeley University, examined the remains of the Twin Towers. He said, I saw melting of girders at World Trade Center. If you remember the Salvador Dali paintings with the clocks that are kind of melted, it's kind of like that. That could only happen if you get steel yellow hot or white hot, perhaps around 2000 degrees. Possibly the most authoritative account of all comes from Leslie Robertson, the engineer who had built the Twin Towers. We were down, uh, down at the B1 level and one of the firefighters uh, said, I think you'd be interested in this, and, and they pulled off a big block of concrete, and there was a, like a little river of steel uh, flowing. Again, Ignoring all these testimonies does not mean to have debunked the presence of molten steel below the rubble. It just means turning a blind eye to what the actual situation at Ground Zero was after the collapse of the Twin Towers. And there's more. Concrete normally doesn't melt in regular fires. In fact, one of the reasons it's used in civil construction is its resilience to high temperatures. Yet molten concrete was found at Ground Zero. 
Preserved at the New York Police Museum, this artifact caption reads, During recovery efforts, several handguns were found at Ground Zero, including these two cylindrical gun casing remains and a revolver embedded in concrete. Fire temperatures were so intense that concrete melted like lava around anything in its path. Some debunkers have argued that this cannot be molten concrete, as the higher melting point of concrete would have also melted the steel from the gun. But the molten concrete could have already been cooling off by the time it encountered the guns, in which case it would not have melted them instantly. Here, for example, is flowing lava from a volcano, which is in the process of cooling off after having reached the melting point. As one can see, the lava surrounds the base of the trees without necessarily incinerating them at once. In a hangar near Kennedy Airport sits another artifact attesting to the extreme temperatures reached during the collapses. This formation is really four separate stories of the World Trade Center, compressed, compacted, incinerated, exposed to temperatures as hot as the inner Earth. I never knew this existed. Another of these artifacts, nicknamed the meteorite, contains both molten steel and molten concrete. One of the more unusual artifacts to emerge from the rubble is this rock-like object that has come to be known as the meteorite. It's this fused element of, of steel, mo molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. As we know, for concrete to melt, a temperature of several thousand degrees is needed and the result will be much the same as the lava that comes out of volcanoes. And almost like a chunk of lava from Kilauea or Iceland where they're very sharp but, but breakable shards on the end here. Question. Given that most of the jet fuel was burned after the impacts, given that only office fires were burning at the time of the collapses, and given that no major source of combustibles seems to have been available underground, can you offer a comprehensive explanation for the temperatures up to 2,800 degrees reported at ground zero, for the long-lasting fires underground, for the incandescent beams repeatedly extracted from the rubble, for the massive steel beams bent like a pretzel, for the molten steel and the molten concrete observed and found at ground zero as caused by the office fires and the gravitational collapses only?